Welcome, welcome. Be holy, be perfect. Thank you for tuning in. We continue with First Peter, and we are now in chapter three. First Peter, chapter three, part one. Be obedient. Be sprinkled with His blood. We are moving through uh, the first epistle of Peter, and how wonderful it is to know that God has an answer and instructions for every area of our life, for every area of our life. He deal with the children. He deal with the mothers. He deal with the fathers. He deal with the family as a whole. He deal with how we should live with one another. So there shouldn't be any ambiguities or any discrepancies or misunderstanding about how the set apart ones, the be holy, be perfect uh, individuals and families and group of individuals should live among each other. It is just a teaching that we should all learn and not just learn, but we should live it out. It is a wonderful thing to serve the Lord. So I just say bless, be blessed, be blessed, bless the Lord, fear the Lord, receive the love of the Most High God in Jesus' name, and let's get started with the Word of God. 1 Peter chapter 3, part 1, verses 3, verses 1 through 6. In the same way, you wives, be submissive to your own husbands, so subordinate, not as inferiors, but out of respect for the responsibility entrusted to the husband and their accountability to God. And so partnering with them so that even if some do not obey the word of God, they may be won over to Christ without discussion by the godly lives of your their wives by the godly lives of their wives now let's break this down because some people really think that being submissive means being a slave that is not what it means being submissive does not mean being abusive being a indentured servant in your home that's not what it means it means to be a partner with your husband so that you your prayers would not be answered and that you can live in peace. It also explains here that the husband, his responsibility, which has been some of us, uh, we want to take the responsibility of the husband, and that's why the family unit don't work um, with all this uh, feminism, but I'm not going to go into that. Um He's saying here that we shouldn't, uh, the husband shouldn't treat their wives as inferior or somebody that they can abuse, but out of respect, the uh, the women should, uh, out of respect for the responsibility entrusted to the husband and their accountability to God. Now, note this that every husband is not a servant of God. We sometimes get out there and marry somebody that uh, looks good, make us feel good, but they are not godly. They are not in the commonwealth of God. And so once you marry them and they act like monsters, is because you married a monster and you wanted God, now you want God to change him into a saint. Well, he can and he might, uh, but remember that he tell us not to be unevenly yoked. So what you may be experiencing is the consequences of your disobedience to uh, be uh, uh, when you was unevenly yoked. But there is hope. There is hope. The Lord say, as a woman of God, uh, set apart unto God, we should live like that. And we shouldn't, even though the person may be... Uh, not saved, but they should at least not be abusive. This is not 
a, a verse to tell you to stay in abuse. And that's why I'm on that topic right now. Don't stay in abuse because abuse is not something that God has ordained. First Peter three and two, when they see your modest and respectful behavior together with your devotion and appreciation, love your husband, encourage him and enjoy him as a blessing from God. See, uh, we should, uh, look at our husband as a blessing from God. But again, if they are not uh, walking under, in obedience to God, that's kind of difficult to do. But just remember, God is saying, regardless if they are believers or set apart ones or not, we should still love them since we married them, encourage uh, him and enjoy him as a blessing from God. So if we see that our husband is a blessing from God, then God can change him. Uh, but first we need to repent of marrying, breaking the law, uh, breaking the law of God. When he say, do not be unevenly yoked with unbelievers. We need to repent of that. So until we repent of our sins, then we're going to be in a situation where it's not conducive to peace in the home. So the Lord is still continually talking about, uh, modesty, you know, dress modestly, not, uh, running around with no clothes on. Um, and I'm not saying being completely naked, but some people, they so close to naked, you, they might as well not have on anything. And he's simply saying, just show respect, show the respect that you want and just be kind to one another. Uh, just be kind and look at each other as gifts from God. So we don't mistreat or uh, abuse the gift from God. We have to live in peace. And another reason that we need to respect, love, and encourage our husband is because without uh, being agree in agreement with them, our prayers can be hindered. First Peter 3 and 3, your adornment not must not be merely external with uh, interwoven and elaborate knotting of hair and wearing uh, gold jewelry, uh, beautiful superficial preoccupation with dressing in expensive clothes, but let it be the inner beauty of the hidden person of the heart with imperishable qualities and unfading charm of a gentle and peaceful spirit, one that is calm and self-controlled, not over anxious, but serene and spiritually mature, which is very precious in the sight of God. So he's uh, given what the characteristics and traces of a good wife should be or a good woman should be. Uh, and he's specifically talking about the marriage, the wife and the husband. And so uh, just understand that a lot of the Gentiles, uh, the same thing as is done today. The body is the most important thing to them. And, you know, getting the hair done, getting the nails done, you know, expensive clothes, even when bills are not paid, even when the children are neglected. And this is a uh, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye and the pride of life. And those are what they are saying. It is lawlessness. It creates a crime scene. And this is why we have lawlessness in the home. But let it be inner beauty. That means let it be uh, the traces and attributes and characteristics of the Holy One of the Lord. Let us be created in the image and likeness of Christ so that we will be uh, daughters of God that manifest the characteristics of the most high God. And we should be gentle and peace and have a peaceful spirit. Uh, I've been around people that, uh, women that they just castrate their husband in public and just say anything and think that's okay. And then they get up and say, I'm sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. How silly can you be? You know, God look at how we treat each other and how we treat each other. If it is not according to the word, it is a sin and it is a crime scene. So we should allow the Holy Spirit to lead us in how we should treat our husband and husband how you should treat your wives. And he said, have some type of self-control. Don't be over anxious. Don't be all stressed out 
Uh, and because when one person is stressed out, the whole family is stressed out. So he's saying, get, get control of yourself. Have some type of self-control. And we get self-control by yielding to the Holy Spirit and yielding to the things that God tell us to yield to. And then he simply say, for this, for in this way, in former times, the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves, being submissive to their husband and adopting themselves to them. This is critical. This is critical. Uh, you may uh, be married to someone that is just slothful. They don't have any ambition to uh, lead the family, to guide the family in uh, right living under God. Okay, so you're going to have to step up and take that take that uh, responsibility, but you don't keep that responsibility. You uh, uh, ask God to uh, establish your home the way it should be because the husband is the head of the household and he should be respected of the head of the household. However, he should also be responsible and take up his duties. You know, uh, just because you are a man, and you're supposed to be the head of the household, don't mean that you are the head of the household. These responsibilities and function must be lived out. And uh, we should expect husband to be responsible and be the head of the household. And when I say the head of the household, it don't mean that they lead in the financial uh, arena because there are, uh, are women that make more money than their husband. But that don't make you the head of the household. It makes you a person that has economical value uh in your family so let's let's don't get that twisted uh and he's saying that you know being submissive to your own husband and adopting yourself to them so if our husband have a goal we should try to help him and encourage him in that goal uh even though we may have a, a career of our own but the Lord is saying, adapt yourself to your husband. He should encourage you and you should encourage him. And on all levels, you should work together. You should live in harmony for and in peace. For without peace, no man shall see God. And that includes husband and wife. And so it is, it's not, it's not, uh, sometimes it's not uh, uh, easy uh, because, you know, the Lord usually put opposites together so that we can refine each other and adjust ourselves. You know, if we are anxious, the Lord usually will put us together with someone that won't, move, won't even be moved or shaken by an earthquake, you know, and that's, that's how God works. You know, it's, it's sometimes it's, it's like hilarious uh, because we, we, we like, oh God, what, I mean, can't anything get you going, you know, and, uh, but then we're moving too fast and that, the Lord give us someone like that to love us and to balance us out. So uh, 1 Peter 3, 6, just as Sarah obeyed Abraham, follow him as having and having regards for him as head of their house, calling him Lord. And you have become your daughters if you do what is right without being frightened by any fear that is being respectful to your husband, but not giving into intimidation nor allowing yourself to be led into sin, nor to be harmed. So here is clear is that Peter is not telling a wife to be abused by a husband or to sin because a husband sinned. And that is a lot of false teaching that uh, some of the people in the body of Christ, you know, they say, well, you if he wants you to go and do this, then you go ahead and do it. No, that's not what the scripture is saying here, nor allowing yourself to be led into sin, nor being harmed. In other words, you don't have to take abuse from your husband uh, just because he is the head of the household. Let's be realistic. God is not having uh, someone be abused uh uh, because they have poor leadership or poor uh, 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 leader in the house, so let's let's not let's stop lying to women and telling them to stay in an abusive relationship because the Lord say they should not be uh, in harm's way and the husband should not be beating on his wife, verbally abusing his wife or his children, 
and uh, the wife shouldn't be verbally abusing or mistreating her husband. That works both ways. So let us learn how to respect one another, how to love one another. And yes, it is it's nothing wrong with looking up to your husband and seeing him as, you know, wow, he's like a, a great man. I mean, why, why would you uh, think of your husband as a fool and you living with him or he's a clown and you living with him? Well, you married him. He was a clown when you married him. So now you want him to be the king of of the hill. Well, he, he's going to have to get there and God is the one that's going to bring him there. You will not bring him there. So let's learn how to respect uh, 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 a husband and wives. Love your husband. Encourage your husband. Uh, treat them with respect, dignity. Uh, clean up the mouth and the speech uh, around your husband. Don't uh, just be a wicked person that a person just he bar and grind his teeth just to live with you and husband you need to do the same the lord talks about the responsibility of the husband husbands in ephesians chapter 5 so if you have any problem with uh, understanding your responsibility and your duty and how to treat your wife and your children just read uh ephesians chapter 5 that'll clarify it along with chapter 6 so that is not uh, a lot of things that people want to hear, but let, let us understand that the word of God is for correction. The word of God is for education, for training in righteousness. So when we live in chaos in our home, normally there is no righteousness in the home. So let us live in peace, love, and encourage one another in the love of the Lord. And God will bless us for that. Now, may you be... Uh, blessed. May you learn to love your spouse in the way that God say that we should love, respect, and encourage them. Uh, and that is for husband and wives. And respect your children and don't be abusive to your children. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord God. We just thank you for giving us a way to live and how to live and how to treat one another. Uh, and we just thank you and we praise you. We say, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. Glory to God our Father.